In one of my latest videos, I briefly mentioned the OUNB, otherwise known as the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists Bandera. A few people reached out to ask what the difference was between the so-called regular OUN and the one with Bandera attached to it. So, I thought I'd make a short video on the topic. This is not an attempt to describe the organization's entire history in great detail, but just a general overview so people can understand. Originally formed from a number of smaller ultranationalist groups in 1929, the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists was pretty much exactly what the name described. It started out working primarily within Galicia, though not all intellectuals part of the movement were Galician or Valonian in origin. Their goals were simple, an independent and so-called ethnically pure Ukrainian state. They would be willing to use any means necessary to achieve this. Terrorism, infiltration of institutions, assassinations, ethnic cleansing, pretty much nothing would be off the table. In 1940, however, the group would break up into two separate entities. OUNM was led by Andriy Melnik, a founding member in 1929 who had all but retired in the 1930s before being brought back in 39. He would lead the organization for the year prior to the split. This faction, though still ultranationalist, was by all accounts more moderate and more traditionally focused, like their former military officer of a leader. They also had a relatively positive relationship with the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church as well, compared to OUNB, which was predominantly anti-clerical and closer to the OUN's original views on religion. Melnik's group would almost completely die out in western and central Ukraine at the hands of their now more extreme opponents, led by Stepan Bandera. Though small pockets of the organization have survived up until the present day, they are by far the less well-known of the two groups. Bandera's faction was radical in thought and younger in age. Dissatisfied by Melnik's ideals and strategy, they sought to break apart from them. These extremist factors showed in their leader himself, who was sentenced to death for the 1934 assassination of Bronislav Pieraki, only to be released following the invasion of Poland. This Banderite organization would be responsible for the formation of the Ukrainian insurgent army, at the cleansing of Poles within Volonia, as well as helping the Nazis with the extermination of Jews in western Ukraine. And along with Ukrainian SS divisions, have a surprising number of monuments within Canada and Australia. Even after souring relations with the Nazis in 1942, the OUNB lived on into the Cold War era as a strong political force, covertly supported by government organizations such as the MI6 and the CIA. I suppose you can make up your own mind about that last part and what it means. Bandera was eventually assassinated by KGB agents in 1959 while he was in Munich, where he had spent much of his time post-World War II. Hopefully you now know the difference between both factions. Thank you, and see you next week.